Sherry Sangji, a young research associate, died of severe burns from a chemical lab fire at UCLA nearly four years ago. She was only 23. Sherry was working in a laboratory in one of the largest and most prestigious universities in the world, and there should be no safer place for someone to go to work. Sangji was working for Patrick Heron, a highly recruited, hard-charging professor in the chemistry department. On December 29, 2008, Sangji was here in Heron's lab. She was working with this bottle of T-butylithium, a highly volatile chemical that ignites when simply exposed to air. In a flash, she caught on fire. Sangji was transferring the chemical using a syringe and had accidentally pulled out the plunger. When I arrived at the hospital, almost 50% of her body was severely burned. Um, her hands were burned down all the way to tendon. Um, her abdominal wall had been burnt off. She had third degree burns to her neck. She died 18 days later. Investigators from the State Occupational Health and Safety Agency, Cal OSHA, questioned Professor Heron in a deposition obtained exclusively for this report. When Sherry arrived, do you know if she received any general lab safety training from the university? Um, I, I don't believe she received generalized safety training. Um, I believe my assistant was told that uh, it was not offered for her category per se. They determined that Sherry Sangji had not been taught how to work safely with the dangerous chemical. Did you ever discuss the characteristics of T-butyllithium with Sherry? Uh, no, not, not of T-butyllithium specifically, no. Um, <clears throat> did you have any fire-resistant uh, clothing available for, for employees to use when handling T-butyllithium? Not fire-resistant clothing, no. Based on Cal OSHA findings, Professor Heron is facing three felony counts. It's the first time a professor in the United States has been charged with a felony for the workplace death of an employee. We're trying to send a clear message not only to the employers, but also to the industry generally, um, that this behavior will not be tolerated. Ellen Wydess oversees Cal OSHA and its Bureau of Investigations which is empowered to build criminal cases and recommend felony charges. Making criminal referrals is absolutely important for those kinds of cases where there is such employer culpability and the injuries serious. In most states, penalties are so minimal that they do become a cost of doing business. Nationally, causing a workplace death or serious injury is at most a misdemeanor. California is taking a harder line. UCLA and the UC Regents are also named in the felony complaint. I think this is a landmark case. I have Jim Kaufman is a leading lab safety expert. This was a tsunami throughout academia that criminal charges were being filed against the university. I think good things are going to come as a result of this and that uh, Sherry Sanji's death will not be in vain. Since Sangji's death, UCLA has founded the Center for Laboratory Safety and says in this video that it will raise safety standards in academic labs. Yeah, the chancellor's made it clear that he wants to see UCLA as best in class. And, and as a result of that, we're really putting a lot of energy and effort into, the, into sharing our, our experiences with other universities. The university has paid Cal OSHA fines related to the Sangji accident and for other violations they uncovered. UCLA is contesting another fine for not reporting a previous lab accident that seriously burned a graduate student. The Heron case is being closely watched by lab workers at other California campuses, which have experienced at least seven chemical accidents since Sherry Sangji's death. And it seems to be having an impact, according to the union that represents lab workers. Before this case, it took us months and sometimes over a year to get any safety grievance fixed. Now it's don't bother filing a grievance, Nino. Just give me a call. Of course we want to do everything possible to ensure safety here at UCSF. They're afraid, and rightly so, justly so. On July 27th, the UC Regents agreed to a settlement of the criminal case against UCLA they accepted responsibility for conditions in the lab that led to Sangji's death.
The regents also agreed to implement comprehensive safety measures and to establish a $500,000 scholarship in Sherry Sangji's name. But Professor Patrick Heron refused to accept a settlement, and his case continues. If convicted, he could face up to four and a half years in prison. His lawyer maintains he did nothing wrong. What happened in that laboratory was an accident, not a crime. Sherry had a chemistry degree from Pomona College. She had experience as a professional lab technician. She had received safety training repeatedly in her career. She had been published in chemistry journals, and she was well qualified for her position. While we all wish this terrible tragedy had not occurred, there is no reasonable explanation for this prosecution. Sangji's sister, Naveen, says she's not going to rest until the professor is brought to justice. Incidents like these don't just happen. People don't go to work to get burnt over 50% of their bodies. Um, people don't go to work to die, and Sherry should not have suffered that way.